So you're thinking about using shipping containers for your new home, right? Well, the structural integrity of those shipping containers is a big concern, and we're going to talk about that in this video. Hi, I'm Larry Lane, and I've been really fascinated by all the cool things you can build with shipping containers. And one of the concerns is, is it really structurally sound and safe to use these boxes as a element, a building element for our new home? Well, to long story short, you probably already have seen many houses built with shipping containers, and you know then it probably is structurally sound to be used for shipping containers, and indeed they are. Uh, shipping containers are built to withstand hurricane forces on ships while teetering along with other containers on top of it, pounding down between the waves and earthquake forces along with the hurricane forces. So yes, they're very, very strong and they can take a lot of load. So in order to understand the structural integrity of shipping containers, let's talk about all the different structural parts that make the whole shipping container strong. The first one we'll talk about is the floor itself. The floor is usually a one and an eighth inch thick wood floor. And that wood floor is supported by some bent angles as joist, and they're running crossways at 12 inches on center. And the floor, it's designed to hold at least 65,000 pounds. Now that's the equivalent of six school buses on top of each other. It's designed to hold a lot of weight. These floor joists that are running at 12 inches on center are supported by a bottom rail. And that bottom rail is a channel shape. And it's two inches on the top and bottom, and it's about seven inches deep. And that bottom rail is welded to these floor joists and to the corrugated wall itself. It also is welded to the corner posts. And these corner posts is where most of the load is designed to be taken on the sh shipping containers. The, sh the shipping containers are designed to place all of their loads on the four corners. So if you were to have a house and you wanted to crisscross shipping containers this way, it's not designed to take the load in the middle as it is on the four corners. And you will need to get a structural engineer to help you reinforce the shipping container to take the additional loads that you're imposing onto it in places that it normally wasn't designed to take loads. And these corner posts are actually designed to hold up to 165,000 pounds. And that is with possibly eight more shipping containers stacked on top of it. On the top and bottom of these corner posts is a corner casting. And these corner castings are cubed. They're like a large gaming dice with six sides. Three of the sides are solid and they are welded to the, the corner post and onto the side or the top rail or the bottom rail. And then other three, the other three sides are, have holes in them that are open. And that way they can get the twist locks to go into the cavity of this shipping containers corner casting and then the lever of that twist lock can then be turned and you can get, have access to that which locks the one shipping container onto another oftentimes that twist lock also can be used when you're building your shipping container and you even want to place it onto a foundation and i'll leave a link down below where I explain how all the different types of foundations that you might want to consider for your shipping container and how these twist locks can be part of that foundation. And one, one cool thing about the twist locks is it's only a 12 pound item. It's about this big, but it's designed to take up to 100,000 pounds of, of load. So it's a very efficiently designed piece uh, and part of the shipping container. Now the top rail is running from front to back 
and it is around two and three eighths by two and three eighths by one eighth of an inch thick. And it's welded to the sides and to the corner castings. Now the sides is a corrugated metal. And that corrugated metal is a special kind of metal called core tin. And core tin is designed to be allowed to rust. And when it rusts, the rust itself acts as more of a protective barrier to the metal itself. If you do see rust on the outside of these corrugated metal shipping containers, it doesn't necessarily mean that the structural integrity of the shipping container has diminished. The thickness of the corrugated core tin siding is 1.6 millimeters to 2 millimeters, which is about 1 8 of an inch thick. It's not very thick. And the corrugation itself it is helping with the structural integrity because if it was just a flat piece of metal, it would not have the same strength as it is having with its corrugation. I have an article explaining that and I'll leave a link down below about why shipping container sides are corrugated. Now the doors are usually at the ends. We call it the rear end. And the door, this one has an opening one. So the doors are, are comprising of the head. The heading itself acts as a top rail on this other side, but it's over here. And the bottom rail also is the sill of the door. The sill and the head are very much like the rails on the sides and it supports the overall shipping container itself. So does the jam. The jam is kind of like the corner post over here and it also is taking the loads down through the jam part of the shipping container. So one word of caution is that when you're built, buying a shipping container, doors are sometimes the weakest link because when they're being craned up in the air and they're hitting other shipping containers while they're being stacked either on the ship or on land, sometimes the door itself can get smacked. And if that's the case, then the hinges can get all messed up and so can the jam, the structural integrity of the whole framing around the door can be diminished. So when you're looking for a shipping container to buy for your house, look to see that the door and all of its parts are still intact and not damaged. Then there's also the roof. And the roof itself is not designed to take a, a lot of load, as we just mentioned. So a lot of times, if you're going to be, be putting, let's say, a deck on top of the house, or you're going to, um, like I just said before, crossing it over, you will need to introduce additional structural members, both horizontally and vertically down to new footings to take the load that is not going to be uh, good to be placed directly on the roof. Because like I said, the roof is not structurally designed to take a lot of load. Now there is a group that came up with standards that has to be followed when shipping containers are built. All the structural parts are already standardized and this group that standardize them is commonly known as Convention for Safe Containers. There's also a testing procedure that all shipping containers have to go under when just after they're manufactured and before they go back out to sea for any excursion. And that testing procedure is done by ISO. Now you might actually see shipping containers termed as ISO containers and that's why. That they have actually been inspected and hopefully passed as with the ISO standards. ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. So yeah, shipping containers can be used and be structurally safe to be used for a home and you just need to be cautious about the shipping container you're considering to buy and use to make sure that all these parts that we just discussed are not damaged to a point where it will be unsightly 
or it will just not be structurally safe. I strongly suggest to hire a structural engineer to, to actually design all the structural parts that your home is going to need when you use a shipping container as a home. That structural engineer should be able to design the columns and the footings and any kind of beams when you're opening up the walls that's going to weaken the building and the whole box. Um, and when you do open it, you do need to be able to add elements, different other structural elements to take the load that whatever you removed once did take. So whatever you do, be sure to hire a structural engineer. So if this video has been helpful to you, would you give me a thumbs up? Also, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and join me as we explore all kinds of cool things you can build with shipping containers.